Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. If you can't tell by the title, today's gonna be a bit of a story time. Now, I've already tried to record this once already, and I ran out of time, I had to leave for work, and didn't end up getting it completed in time for last Wednesday, so we're gonna try it again. The last time that I tried to record this video, it was over an hour long and I still had not finished it, but if this has to be parts, we'll make this into parts. Um, there is a lot to this story, and as you can see by the title, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So let's start off with a few disclaimers. First of all, names of the story will be changed to protect the innocent and the not so innocent, of course. Yeah. Also, if you know who these people really are or you figure out who these people really are, please refrain from sending them any sort of hate, rude comments, anything whatsoever, just stay away. And last but not least, everything that I say is completely true. These are my experiences, this is what I remember, this is what I recall, and this is the way things were interpreted and how I felt at the time. So if the person I'm speaking about in this video watches this video, please know that this is how I felt and how I experienced everything that went down. So let's start. So the first time that I checked into a mental hospital, I willingly checked myself in. I was having a very hard time staying positive. My sister could see it. We talked it out and we decided that we were going to check in. So if you're ever having suicidal ideations or if you're ever feeling as depressed as I was at that time, anything like that, if you are having any sort of issues and you don't know how to help yourself, please seek out professional help, whatever you can. Check yourself into a mental hospital if you can. I'm not saying don't check into mental hospitals. That's not the point of the story. There's a lot into this story and it all starts inside a mental hospital. So I just want to point out that it's okay to check yourself in. However, if you're going to do so, make sure you look up the place that you're going. That way you know what you can and can't bring so you don't go in with literally nothing like I did. Back to the actual story itself, March 2018, I checked myself into a mental hospital due to suicidal ideations. I was in the waiting room for quite a long time. I got checked in around 11 o'clock, went to bed, woke up, had morning test, including blood drawn, all the fun stuff, you know, and did all the therapy classes. And I'm a very shy person when I don't know people, so I tend to keep to myself at first. So I just kind of kept quiet and then eventually during one of, I think it was lunch or dinner, one of the other people looked over at me and said, so what are you in for? And that was it. That was where everyone kind of started to open up a little bit more and that's when we started to talk a bit more and I started to come out of my shell just a bit more. Now the two girls that I did see in the waiting room, I ended up being in the same ward in. So we ended up talking some more and we became friends. Now we have Sarah, who is the main person in our story today, and then we have Shelby. Um, Shelby was a lot younger than us. When we finally did get out of the mental hospital, we did not see her as often, for she had her own circumstances in which she wasn't able to um, see us. So in the mental hospital, we the three of us became like kind of inseparable. Like everybody knew the three of us were friends. Like basically like the three musketeers of the loony bin. So Sarah and Shelby get out a couple of days prior to I. When I finally get out, I get my phone, I turn it on, and when it comes on, I get about 60 plus text messages from Sarah. A couple of from Shelby, a few from other people, but 60 plus messages from Sarah. Now I should have taken that as a red flag, but you know, your girl didn't. I get out and we start spending a whole lot of time together. We are like basically inseparable. We become best friends, like best friends. We do literally everything together. So at this point she lived with her parents and she was still in school um, getting her master's degree. And we're both kind of trying to date 
at the same time. But anytime my dates messed with our plans, she would throw a fit, which was okay. Like, I thought that was fine. Like, I get it. Like, if I was like, hey, I know we were going to do something again tonight, even though we did something the last three, four nights. Like, I'm going to go hang out with this person if that's totally cool. Oh my God, Ken, I can't believe you would even, like, consider that. Like, whatever. No, like, I don't even want, no, I don't even want to hang out with you anyway. Like, I don't know. Like, whatever. Just do whatever you want. Do whatever you want, Ken. Like, I don't care. Have you ever seen Netflix's show, You? Shay Mitchell's character sounds exactly like Sarah. Like, spot on. I watched that show and I got hella triggered. I texted my best friend and was like, bitch. Regardless. Regardless. And I didn't really notice it at the time, but like any time we had made plans where I thought it was very clear plans and it was with other people, it would become a, a last minute thing for her to, never mind, I'm just going to stay home. I didn't notice it at first, but it started to become very, oops, it started to become very, very noticeable towards the end. And now she starts dating and she finally finds somebody that she's kind of settling down with and we'll call her Rebecca. So she starts dating Rebecca and the three of us start to hang out more. I start to get a little less time with Sarah, but at the same time I understand it's a relationship. I get it, even though she didn't understand that whenever I tried to date somebody, but that's, again, a different part of the story. But she still lives with her family. Now her family at this point were kind of toxic for her. They were very much a trigger for her. She would call me at least three to four times a week just crying her eyes out about something that her parents did or said or her family did or said that upset her in some way or form. And I would have to talk her through it, help her like work it out, kind of just be, just be that friend for her to kind of help her through her emotions and kind of help her uh, decipher how she felt, um, decipher how what her parents said and what they actually meant or whatever or what have you. For the most part, they did say some really upsetting things. Um, so I constantly reminded her that she probably should remove herself from her parents so that she wasn't near them all the time in order for them to constantly affect her this way because they were. They were constantly affecting her. Every single day she was upset like about something. So I advised her to kind of remove herself if she could. So eventually she decides to move out. Her parents say, find out about Rebecca, get really nasty about that whole thing. And I kind of coax her through. I help her do the whole move out thing. She moves in not too far away. And at this time she doesn't have a job, but she has a very wealthy family. I think her mom so co-signed for her or something like that. She tells me she has plenty in her savings to do what she needs to do. She moves in, she has some furniture in her storage. But then, her and Rebecca start to go on like spending sprees for decorations and stuff for her apartment. All the while, I lose my job, I'm kind of drowning, and she just kind of watches um, every time like I'm with her and we get food or something. I'm either paying for both of us or I'm paying for myself and she pays for her and Rebecca, which is fine, like I get it, but it was always like kind of a passive way that she would do it. I think, I don't know, it's just the way that I saw it, but regardless, she was just like forking out money and complaining about how broke she was all the time. And then she would just get very frustrated anytime we had any sort of miscommunication, freak out. Oh my God, Ken! But at this point, I'm not noticing really any of those signs. I'm just floating with it. I'm just going along with the ride. Then comes the day of my attempt, about seconds, minutes, whatever, um, just before I guess I did the deed or whatever, I decided to do anything. I called her, and the only reason I'm bringing this part up is to is for something later in the story. I called her, and she didn't answer, and I continued with the attempt, and then later in the hospital. Her and Rebecca came in and she was sobbing her eyes out. So sorry that she didn't answer her phone because her and Rebecca were together and she didn't notice her phone was ringing. 
which is okay. Like you, life happens. People get busy. That's totally okay. I would never, ever, ever blame Sarah for not being able to answer that phone call. It was not their fault whatsoever. So just putting that out there. So I'm in the hospital and when I get out of the hospital, I start dating somebody and she loved to tell me how everything was fake and how everything with the relationship was going to fail and that nothing was actually going to work and that I was wrong for what I was doing and all of that stuff. She went as far as to text him and to tell him to leave me alone. So it was something that I got really upset with her about and I told her that it was my life they were my mistakes to be making if I need if I was making them. So after like a month or so, or did end up failing, and she pulled the "I told you so" on me, which is totally not something that your friend should do, and that's another red flag that I should have noticed, that I should have taken, taken, and that I should have backed off after, but I didn't. So let's continue our story then. So one day, my mom asks me if if Sarah and I could come to her house which is about a 30 minute drive outside of Phoenix, come to our house and like spend the night for a weekend. So I'm like, okay, I'll talk to Sarah and we'll see and we'll work it out. So I talk to her. So next time Sarah, Rebecca and I are together, like I bring it up to Sarah, we talk it out. She's like, yeah, totally awesome. We work out the dates, everything's cool. So comes the weekend, it's the morning of and she calls me and she's asking me what she needs to bring. And I'm like, oh, just like basic things like a change of clothes for tomorrow, your swimsuit, blah, 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 blah. And she like stops and she starts freaking out on me. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean to change your clothes? And... Like, uh, cause we're spending the night, like I said the other night. I like, cause we're spending the night. That's what my mom asked us to do. Like, that's the whole point of this whole thing. And she's like, what, what, what are you talking about? Like, I never agreed to this. Like, you never told me that happened. Like, you never told me that was going to happen. You never said anything about a sleepover. You never said anything about that. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know that this is mine and Rebecca's night. It's always mine and Rebecca's night. We always spend that night together. Oh my God. Like, how would you, how could you do that to me? Oh my God. How, how dare you? And I was like, okay, all right. I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm really sorry. Like, I, I must not have said anything. Like, I thought I had said something. I thought we agreed on it. Like if we didn't agree on it or if I never said anything, like I'm so sorry. Like I apologize to the hundredth degree. Like I am so sorry. Like you don't have to stay, stay the night. Like I'll talk to my mom. It's cool. Like it's a miscommunication. My bad. Like totally my bad. I'm so sorry. So we end the phone call. I apologize profusely. I grab my stuff. I get ready. I let my mom know the change in the change in situation and she comes over to my house. She gets into my apartment and she's like, kind of like crying still. And I'm like, what's going on? And she was like, I just, I feel like you manipulated me. And I was like, oh, whoa, what a, whoa, wait, back up, what happened? Like, I thought we were cool. Like, I just said that we didn't have to do anything. Like, we don't have to stay. Like, I don't, like you, you want to go home? Like, go home. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't want you to feel that way. Like, what can I, what did I do? Like, what can I do? And she just goes on this like little whiny little rampage about how I never said anything and that how I tricked her into this and how I'm emotionally abusing her kind of basically. Like, I'm in, I manipulated her into going and doing this because now she feels like she has to. And I was like, I... I don't want you to feel that way. Like, I'm giving you 100% permission to walk out the door right now. Like, get the fuck out if that's what you want. Like, I was so much under the impression that we had agreed on this. And I 100% understand if things were miscommunicated. And now I'm telling you that I'm sorry. And now I'm telling you that you don't have to do this. And now I'm telling you that it's not on the table anymore. And you're still upset with me and telling me that I'm manipulating you. And I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. The situation blows over and she's like, it's fine. Like, I'll go with you. It's fine, I'll go with you. Like, no sleepover, nothing. Just like, we're good. Like, we're just gonna go and we're gonna hang out by the pool and everything's fine. Like, that was the rest of the situation we left and like I'm still really mind blown over that whole thing obviously what would 
I have to gain to manipulate you into going into a sleepover at my mother's house? Even after I said, oh, I'm sorry, if I didn't say it out loud, I meant to. And if you're not comfortable with doing that, then you don't have to do that. What part of that is me saying, like, you are doing this no matter what? I'm not. Like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. How was I... How was I manipulating? It was miscommunication, and I... Bitch manipulated me. Whatever. That's not the definition of gaslighting. I don't know what it is. So she graduates with her master's and she goes and gets a job where in which she's required to travel full time. Like she sought this job out and she got this job on purpose, knowing full well that she was going to travel full time. She flies out Monday morning and then she flies home Friday nights. At this point, she has three cats, so she has to figure out what to do with her cats. I volunteered several times to take care of her lovely kitty cats because I love cats right i lived down the street i was like yo if you need me to like just make me a copy of your key and i'll come in every single day i'll just hang out with your cats i don't fucking care like whatever you want me to do like i'll just come i'll scoop the litter i'll feed the cats whatever and she's like no 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 i'm gonna ask my grandma to do it um, so her grandma leaves her passive aggressive notes every week telling her about how her cats are smelly or something like that and i'm like your grandma doesn't even clean the litter box. Like, if you want me to come in, I'll clean the litter box for you. And she's like, no, no, no. I don't want to make my, my elderly grandmother do it. And I don't need you to do it. It's fine. Like, I can do it when I come home. Like, okay, whatever. Yeah, she has three cats at this point, right? So she had one when she moved in. And then she got a second cat shortly after she moved in. And then Rebecca brought her a cat. So now she has three cats. Her grandmother is supposed to take care of them all week, but leaves her passive aggressive notes about them all week, making her very upset every time she comes home for the weekend. Her and Rebecca start to get a little bit more serious and they said that they're going to move in together. And I'm like, are you sure about that? Because you guys have only been together for so long. Like, I think it was like three months at this point. And she was like, That's fine. like I'm gone. Monday through Friday, and we'll just have the weekends together. Like, it'll be great. It's, it'd be like dating anyways. I just come home, we have sleepovers every weekend, basically. I'm like, okay, I get it. And she's like that, and then, I, and then she can watch the cats. And Rebecca's even, like, considering getting rid of her own cat because she knows that he won't do well with her three cats. Rebecca's getting real serious in this. Rebecca buys an engagement ring for her, and Rebecca is talking to me about how she can propose to her and all this fun stuff. And then they decide to kind of mix things up in their relationship and they bring in a man and Rebecca unfortunately is late to this like meeting because of work issues and when she gets there Sarah and this dude are unfortunately a little and they've been just sitting there and chatting this whole time and there's like a weird vibe so then later Sarah tells me that she had like weird feelings for the dude like nothing happened between them at that point but she was like I don't know and I miss guys I told her I think it's just because you had that one night and nothing happened i think you should just continue on with your relationship with rebecca because you guys are very happy together i get a random call one morning I get a random call one morning from sarah and she's bawling her eyes out like hysterical and like what the heck is going on and she was like i can't, can't do this anymore i was like what do you mean she was like i just i can't do it anymore i'll be right there and i'm like what the heck and then Rebecca starts to text me and she's like, I don't know what happened. Like, can you tell me what's going on? Like, I don't know what's what's going on with Sarah. Like, is Sarah mad at me? Like, what, what's happening? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'll let you know. So this is where I become a really bad friend. Please don't judge me for this because I was trying to be a friend for the other person because I felt bad for the other person, okay? So Rebecca was in a really bad spot and clearly Sarah was a toxic person, so... I'm sorry for being such a bad friend at this point to Sarah, but it needed, it needed to happen, okay? I started live texting everything Sarah was telling me to Rebecca. So I was telling her everything that she was saying because I, I felt so bad for Rebecca. Like she was about to propose to her. Like she, her, the, the ring had just come in the mail and like she was ready for this. And I was like, maybe you should hold off. So Sarah's like telling me that she had like this connection with this dude and that she just wasn't feeling it anymore and I'm like, eek, I'm so sorry, like, are you sure you want to end things like this right now? Bitch, don't do anything, don't do it. don't say nothing, do not give her that ring. Sarah and I spend the day together and the entire time Sarah's telling me that she's ready to break up with Rebecca and 
all of her feelings and how she feels and all of that stuff. And I'm word for word sending this stuff to Rebecca. Telling her like engagements off, like don't you dare try to propose to this girl. Rebecca's gonna break it up, break it off before Sarah can. I know it's happened. I tell Rebecca to make sure I'm not part of this shit. Like don't make it sound like I've been texting you all day, right? Like, please leave me out of this. I don't need her to attack me right now. You need to do something. So she texts her something along the lines like, when I came in that night, I saw the way you guys were, you and the dude were talking. And ever since then, I felt like something's been off between us. And I guess what had happened that morning, like she literally like woke up and just wouldn't speak to her. And then just got ready and left. And it was her own apartment, I think. like. Rebecca was staying the night at Sarah's apartment and she left, like just got up and left from my understanding. So Rebecca texted her this long thing about she could tell there was a weird vibe between her and that dude and that ever since that night everything seemed really weird and um, a little bit off and that she felt that it was better to just let her go. And Sarah's response was just like, okay. The way that she took this breakup was just like, all right. I was shocked. We were chilling on Sarah's couch and Rebecca showed up with like a bag of her clothes and just like handed it off and she grabbed it without like a fucking word. Grabbed it and shut the door. And we went back to watching TV like it was nothing. And she was like, that was weird. Wow. I was like, I was so confused by that whole breakup. Like she took it like it was nothing. I currently have two hours and seven minutes on this time. If you want to see part two, make sure you hit that bell icon so it lets you know as soon as my video is posted. I if y'all want some more stories, let's leave some comments. Let's like this video. Let's watch this video a hundred times because if I get more views on this video, then more people will get to see it. I love you guys so much. Drop out.